Okay, guys. So, uh, tough one, that's for sure. A lot of things went into it, but uh, ended up on the wrong end of the stick. So, try to help you with what I can and get back to work. Go ahead, Keith Sergeant. Has it up now for the first question? Grant. Like what was the thinking, what was the thought process, um, first and 10 from the Illinois 37 after Isaiah's run, uh, you throw the ball there. What was the thought process in that situation? You know, quite honestly, Keith, um, call and plays, guys, you know, the, the guys who call the plays, they're in a flow and the guy was open, we just didn't make the throw. You know, we missed the throw. If we, if we complete that throw, out. Somebody's on there with the radio, guys. If we complete that throw, right, and you say, oh, that's a way to be aggressive, and you're, now you're milking the clock down, and they have one timeout, and, you know, we kicked the field goal to win it with, with no time on the clock. In retrospect, yeah, I wish we hadn't thrown it because we threw an interception, but the reality is the route was there, and uh, we got to be able to throw the route and complete the play, and, that's what you do when you call plays. You ham and egg it. You mix back and forth because um, we're still at the 37-yard line or 36, whatever it is. That's not that's not in our range yet. Consistently, I mean, can we hit it there? Sure, but um, we're trying to move the ball down. And you know, and retrospectively, sure, when you throw the pick, you wish you hadn't thrown it. But again, I've been many times when you complete that ball and you wind the clock down and kick it with four seconds, and everybody jumps on the kicker. So, didn't work out this time. Darren, twenty-four seven with the next question. Greg, can you talk about the play of Noah? And was there a point where you thought about maybe pulling him for a punt? Um, I thought it was a little bit of a up, ups and downs, right? A little inconsistent, but you know, we, we made some big throws too. You know, and um, that's that's the hard thing. We're making some plays, and then we're we're giving some up. And that's kind of, you know, if you sum it up, that's that's the story of the game. It just we did not play consistently well enough to win that game. And when you make mistakes like we did in the Big Ten Conference, and some of them are, are granted are by Illinois, right? Uh, number one was very hard to get down, a very good uh, elusive player. Um, we had our opportunities for sure. I mean, we had people at the, at the spot. He made some guys miss. He's a good player. Um, they're doing that because their quarterback's not not available. Uh, that's tough. But we made mistakes. You know, we had some, some penalties that just aren't what we allow in our program. And those, you know, one of them, uh, uh, one of them, led, that drive led to a score. You know, the other one didn't. We took the ball away, but still. Those catch up to you when they catch up to you. You can't do that stuff. That's, I call those stupid and selfish penalties. You do that stuff, you know, makes you feel better in the moment and it hurts your team. And that's not what we're about. So we got to get all that stuff fixed. And uh, that's part of building building this thing, uh, building this program. You know, we have to, we have to, have to, have to understand what it takes to win in this league. And if we don't, it'll be that roller coaster. Some good, some bad. We need, we need, we need to learn that it's it's all in. It's everything. Otherwise, this is this place too hard to win in. Greg, you mentioned Isaiah Williams and how tough he was to bring down. But what are you seeing right now from the run defense overall? Well, it's a different, you know, it's a different kind of run defense, right? Our run defense has actually been pretty decent. Um, up until this, this is this is option football with a very elusive option quarterback, and he did a great job. He he, he really um, was electric. You know, we kind of contained him in the first half, semi. But uh, you know what happens with a guy with that ability? It doesn't take much. There's a little drop off if you're a little fatigued, if you're a little bit banged up, um, and you know. It, that's the way it is, and that's college football. Right? I mean, guys are going to have players like that that they jump in there. We do it a little differently with Johnny Langman, but he's very productive for us. So uh, today it was full time, and we kind of had a suspicion that's what we were going to get. But you never know for sure. Um, 
but he is an elusive guy. James Cratch at com. Greg, I knew you talked about you're trying to get closer to the field goal. What what is going on with the kicking situation? You know, got you had Fab early on. Now you have Valentino. Justin's back on kickoffs, not handling place kicks. Where do you stand? And why did you go to Valentino today? Uh, I just felt like he was kicking better, you know, and it's been leading up that way. And again, those competitions are open competitions, and you see what you see on Saturdays. But I see him every day at practice, and we evaluate them, and. Um, you know, it's the same with every position. I think every position is open, and we, you know, we've moved some linebackers, we've moved some offensive linemen. This is a very early season program, and, and you know, every single day it's going to be earned, and we'll make changes. I have said this to the guys. We don't know. I've often said to the guys that I don't make the change. I just facilitate it on the depth chart. Our performance is what we do up on the line. Up to the people that are in the right position. Question from Jerry Carino, Gannett. Craig, what, what, what will you say to Noah this week to keep his confidence up or address any confidence concerns? Well, Jerry, there's nothing you can say. You know, uh, there's no magicians out there. Confidence is earned. So confidence to me is earned through preparation and then through performance. So when you don't perform the way you want to, then you got to go back and hit the preparation harder. And uh, I have, I'm not saying he didn't prepare hard because I'm sure he did. I, I, I believe he did. He made some that were the plays that, you know, really gave us the lead. And then we, we, we didn't make some others. And that's reality, right? I, I don't think that coaches have this one that can give people confidence. I point out what he did well, but, you know, you got to learn this one. You can't do that. can't throw it late there. That's dangerous. To me, playing quarterback is about managing risk and managing opportunity. We talk about it all the time. You got to let bad plays die. There's plenty of them. I don't know how many we played today, but there's plenty of plays. Let the bad ones go. It's hard, though, right? Because every one of these kids is an intense competitor. And they're trying to make it work on that play. That's hard. At every level, it's always been a, a challenge to get the quarterbacks to do that. And the great ones know they can sense when it's time to manage the risk. And when it's time to go for the jugular and take advantage of the opportunity. Our question. The next one's from Chris Nowalski with Rivers. Hey, Coach. I know this season um, a bunch of guys have started or, and started and played at center. Um, I was curious what uh, what uh, Felter did to earn the start today. Well, Felter started at guard. But um, we just felt like, again, no different than the kicker. Um, when we evaluated the combination of practice and what's happened in games, we felt like he gave us the best chance to win. And, you know, I, I, it's hard to tell with alignment to see it all in there. I'm anxious to watch the tape and, and evaluate how we played up front. But uh, usually when you run for the yards that we did, you know, somebody blocks somebody. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to looking for it, looking at it. Question from Steve Pelini, NJ.com. Hey, Greg, I, I think the first few weeks of the season raised the expectations for people outside the program. 
It's a game like this, a reminder that the trajectory for rebuild is really, you know, straight up. Well, I guess yes and no. I, I, I want the expectations to be higher. That's that's what they should be. Um, but I knew what this game was going to be. I told our team early on, and I told them throughout the week, you know, this is a team that went to a bowl game last year. They lost a lot of guys to COVID. They're 0-3. Coach Smith is a great coach. He's got a great staff. This was a wounded animal backed into a corner, and they were going to come out and fight. And, you know, we go up 10 or 10 nothing early. But you know, and when you've been doing it as long as I have, you know this one's coming down to the to the final whistle. You know it. And uh, essentially it did, right? I mean, whatever was kicked with seven seconds, whatever it was. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend.